Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that was established in 2009 and is still inactive today. With divine inspiration, Pastor Paul Rika is an inspired teacher of holiness. His fervent teachings will take listeners to a new level of understanding, holiness, and righteousness. Come to this faith, your child shall be healed. People shall get out of their life, whether they are here or not here. Come to this faith, your husband shall be delivered. That people shall fly away in the name of Jesus. The book is 1,000 Naira per copy. So those that are collected free have received one 1,000 Naira free gift. Put your hand together for Jesus. Amen. Want to rise up on our feet and go to God in prayer? Let's rise up. Let's appreciate the Lord. Thank God for his love for us, for his concern for souls. That is why the Lord left heaven and came to this wicked world to die for our sins. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord for his mercies, for his kindness, for his love. If not that Jesus came to pay the price to redeem us from doom, from damnation, what would have been our hope? What would have been our lot? We would have perished forever. But glory and honor be to the Lord, the greatest evangelist who left his glory above and came to bear a cross to Calvary and died a shameful death and rose again after three days, ascended to heaven and is alive forevermore. Father, we appreciate you. We give glory and honor to you, O God, for what the Lord has done for us. We are eternally grateful. To you be the glory, honor, and praise. Jesus' name, we pray. Pray that this book that the Lord has used our daddy to write, the international director, that God will use this book to reawaken evangelism, to revive evangelism, bring back the zeal, the passion, the burden for soul winning in the life of believers. The dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall rise again. There shall be preaching of the word everywhere. Then the Lord gave the command. Bible said they went everywhere preaching the word. Lord, we are praying, O oh God, through this book, there shall be global revival. As many as who read this book shall move out. There shall be a power embedded in this book to make people to move out, to make believers to move out with the word of God, with the word of life, holding for the word of life in the name of Jesus. Paul in his time, they testified of him. Not only Paul, but other believers with him. He said, these men that have turned the world upside down have come here also. That was a testimony about Paul. They turned their own world upside down. We shall turn our own world upside down for Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Father, we thank you. We are grateful to you because it is mercy and love that located us and brought us to holiness, revival movement worldwide so that we can be cleansed, we can be purged, we can be prepared, we can be perfected and made ready for heaven. And part of this perfection, this process is to reawaken evangelism and to open our eyes to the great danger of not evangelizing. Father, we are praying that you will accomplish that in Jesus' name. As we continue, lead and direct us. Let the Lord speak to us. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Hallelujah. You can sit down. Put your hand together for Jesus as you take your seat. I greet you all in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, we are here to review this book, a great book written by our international director, Pastor Paul Rika. 
And the topic, title of the book is The Danger of Not Evangelizing. Can we say it? Yes, that is the topic, title of the book. And the ushers will be going around so that we can buy the book. And during the break time also, we can also go to the book sales, bookshop, and get the book. 1,000 Naira per copy. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. This is a great scriptural exposition to open the eyes of believers that have become lukewarm, that are lethargic, believers that are indifferent to the commandment of God. I think yesterday we had a message that there is a need to obey authorities and that the number one authority is God. And God has said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel and you are not doing it. Or you have done it for some time and you have stopped doing it. Or you are lukewarm and indifferent about it. That is disobedience. And the punishment for disobedience is hellfire. So, in a nutshell, the danger of not evangelizing is that you will go to hellfire. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. The book is one of many books that have been written by our international director, Pastor Paul Rica. Uh, by the grace of God, there are over 70 books and stay counting. Put your hand together for Jesus. Amen. This book... Let's have, give it a close look. We want to have an overview of the book. The book has seven chapters. As you have it. Have it. And the, the, I'll go through the chapters. Chapter one is evangelism. The heartbeat of Jesus Christ. Under which you have Jesus is the greatest evangelist. The importance of evangelism. The Holy Spirit empowers and directs evangelism. Evangelism, the message of hope. Evangelism, the message of salvation and reconciliation. Chapter 2, wisdom and boldness in evangelism. Under which you have, be wise and fruitful. Be bold and courageous. Boldly declare to the people their sins. Chapter 3, the consequences of not evangelizing. Amen. Under which you have lack of evangelism incurs God's wrath on the believer. Lack of evangelism makes you spiritually dry. Lack of evangelism may make you lose your salvation. Lack of evangelism deprives they are afflicted from Christ's intervention. Lack of evangelism will withhold God's blessings from your life. Then chapter 4, personal and spiritual revival through evangelism and soul winning. And under chapter 4, 4.1, revival in evangelism as part of overall Evangelism. Evangelism, a tool for personal revival. Desire to be a soul winner. Organize prayer for evangelism. For evangelism revival by the church. Church revival entails restoration of righteousness. Amen. Chapter 5, learning from Bible evangelists and soul winners. We have two sections there. The four lepers, the maniac of Gadara. Chapter 6, workable methods of evangelism and soul winning. Evangelism by invitation. Evangelism by the use of revelation. Evangelism by the use of testimonies. Evangelism by the use of Christ, miracle, power. The last chapter, which is chapter 7, seek counsel for effective and fruitful evangelism. Amen. 
mentorship of true believers and ministers, the use of inspired evangelism materials. In this book review, by the grace of God, we shall be doing a lot of reading. Much, much of what we are going to be doing this morning, the book is an inspired blessing that the Lord has dropped, uh, given to us, to the church, to the movement, and to the church at large. Uh, so we shall spend quality time reading so that we can digest the message and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let's go through the introduction. You have a copy open to the introduction page as you go through from the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 and 2 and verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 and 2 and verse 11. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley without was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold they were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry then he said unto me son of man these bones are the whole house of israel behold they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost we are cut off for our parts the church of jesus christ today concerning the issue of evangelism and so winning is like the valley of dry bones in the open valley whose bones are very dry there is a cry everywhere that the spirit of evangelism has left the church. The leaders and members of the church have entered into the state of evangelism impotency. This state is determined in the church, is detrimental to the church, and is responsible for the many evils that occur among them, known or unknown to them. This book, The Danger of Not Evangelizing, comes with the power of God to give evangelism life in the church as the dry bones were given life through the word of prophecy. Read this book. It will kindle fire in your bones and you will never be the same again. It will not give you rest until you recover from evangelism power in Jesus' name. We are saying that evangelism is like is in a state of impotency, like the dry bones that the Lord showed Ezekiel in the valley. There were many and they were dry. That is how evangelism is today. The devil has done a lot to hinder evangelism, to block evangelism, to stop evangelism. There are countries in the world today that you cannot carry Bible freely into that country. They have banned evangelism. In fact, not only evangelism, they have outlawed Christianity altogether. And these are souls that Jesus died for. Who will tell them? How will they hear? How will they get to know that the Savior has died? That they don't need to end up in hellfire. And there are places, even in other in countries where there is evangelism, there are several laws to hinder people from preaching the word of God. Sometimes you enter a, a bus, you see boldly written there, no, ever, no preaching, no hawking, no preaching. They classify preaching the word of life, the same category with hawking, maybe medicines, hawking uh, food items. That will show you the way the people of the world look at this and the government fight against it. Amen. Just to guard the mouth of the preacher. Just to make sure that this message doesn't come out. Some governments will want to make a legislation that will say, you cannot preach except from a licensed premises, from a licensed church, from a religious uh, venue. So it means that all this uh, morning cry, going about to preach, going with megaphone, going to offices to preach, they, have, they are planning to outlaw it. In fact, some places have done so already. So that this vital and essential word of life should not get to perishing souls. They will never succeed in Jesus' name. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 29, Is not my word like a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer, that breaketh the rock in pieces. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, 
nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Amen. This is my prayer for myself and for everyone that is hearing my voice this day. Let the word of God be like fire in us, you know, fire in our bones. That as you see the sinner, you must preach to him. You must preach to her. You must open your mouth. You must give out materials. Give tracts. Give books. Invite people to conferences. Invite people to chapter meeting. To unit meeting. And to other programs and activities of the church. In Jesus name. In Psalm 32 verses 3 to 5. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin. Amen. When we keep silent and don't preach, let the fire be burning in us in Jesus' name. This book reveals to the church and the believer the great danger one who does not evangelize or win souls to Christ faces before God. Little have you known that the sickness of your body, the poverty of your life, the regular attacks and many other mishaps against you may be caused by your not preaching the gospel. It is a common knowledge that Exercising the body relieves it from pains and accumulated sicknesses in it. Similarly, evangelism is a spiritual exercise that relieves the believer from many evils that come from God and from Satan. This book will open your eyes not only to the blessing of evangelism, but to the woes that you suffer for not evangelizing. Amen. You know, uh, if you look at the book of Ephesians, when he said we should put on the whole armor, the Christian armor, talking about the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, he also talks about having your feet short with the uh, gospel, preparation of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. So it is the footwear, it is like the boots that you wear, it is part of the Christian armor, evangelism. And when you are not evangelized, evangelizing, you are not fully clothed. You are vulnerable to attack. You are open to uh, problems. The enemy will target you. He knows that you are a disobedient person. Remember, I've already told us, the Lord has said, go and evangelize. You are not doing it. You are a disobedient person, a disobedient child of God. And then, the Bible says, you can only be read, able to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Amen. As long as your own obedience is not complete, the devil will just be making mockery of you. That is why you see a lot of problems coming upon believers, coming upon churches, and you will not know this is because they are not obeying my voice, or the voice of God. In the early church, they were comfortable in Jerusalem. They were not, the Lord has said, you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But they remained in Jerusalem. The Lord raised up persecution for, against the church. The Lord himself stirred up great persecution that dispersed them abroad. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said that they, they were scattered abroad when they were doing what? Preaching the word. It is the preaching of the word that will give us victory over the devil, over situations and circumstances, over the adversities that we are encountering. In Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And everybody say... This is the voice of our Lord, of our Master. He says, go ye therefore. It's a command and an action is expected. We should rise up and go and preach the word of God. And God will bless our labor in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 16 from verse 15. 
And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. After this conference, we shall go forth and preach everywhere. Thank God it's an international conference. Many are here from various states in Nigeria, from West African countries, from other parts of the world, and some that are not here, many that are not here, are connected online and are following the program from various places, from Europe, from North America, from Asia, other parts of Africa, even within Nigeria here also. And what God expects of us is that we should go out and preach the word of God. We shall go out and preach the word of God everywhere. And the Lord shall be walking with us with signs and wonders in Jesus' name. The book is a great book. And it is also of quite a volume. And we have a limited time to review it. But as God gives us grace, we shall see how far we can go in Jesus' name. Now we are going to chapter 1, which is evangelism. The heartbeat of Jesus Christ. You know that the heart is a very delicate part of the body. It is a very central part. Very important. Because that is the heart of the matter. And as long as your heart is beating, you remain alive. Praise the Lord. If the heart starts beating, can that person live? So the heart is very precious, very important. And the Lord says, the, what is very important to me is evangelism. That is my heartbeat. Jesus is the greatest evangelist. Every one of us that is here, that is born again, that is converted, you are a direct convert of Jesus Christ. Because the Lord himself is the one following us up. He's the one that brought us to himself. He's the one that came to die for us. So we must, we want to appreciate the Lord as the greatest evangelist. He is the one that left heaven, came and condescended to a man. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 that the Lord himself did not count it robbery to be equal with God but he made himself of no reputation and took the form of a man. Even as a man, he became as a servant and died a painful death an excruciating death uh, just to save you and I. So he is the greatest evangelist. In the book of Mark chapter 16, we have read already Mark 16 from verse 15 to 20, we can see the Lord is concerned about souls. When he came on earth as a human being, he said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. That is his work. Till now, seeking and saving the lost, interceding for people, for his children, uh, fight, defending his children, protecting his children, just to make sure that we make it to heaven. Evangelism is a commission given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ when he was leaving the earth. It shows what we should occupy ourselves doing until he comes. Amen. And it's not something you do for his time and stop. No. Because the Lord said, Occupy till I come. You may have been doing evangelism for a period in the past and you have stopped. He has to meet you doing it. Amen. The Lord gave a parable of a householder that was going to a, for a journey and he gave talents to his uh, servants. And he said, blessed is that, who is the wise servant? Blessed is that servant. When his Lord shall come and find him, meet him, doing the appointed task. Hallelujah. 
So it's not a historical experience. It's not a historical uh, obedience that you have been doing in the past. Keep on doing it. Be occupied in it. Occupy till I come. Occupy till I call you home. Occupy till the time of the rapture. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. This task is not difficult. It, is, it only involves the use of your mouth. It is for you to preach, to tell others what the Lord has done for you. So it is not a difficult task. It's not an impossible task that we cannot do. Evangelism is not difficult for you to do. Why do you not do it? If you don't exercise yourself in evangelism, your Christian life will die. You will lose the presence of God if you do not exercise yourself in telling somebody about Jesus. Amen. You can picture it as somebody that was in, you know, in danger. Let's assume there was in a house, a building, there was a great fire. A fire is burning the house. And there are many people there. And thank God, somebody came and rescued you. And pulled you out of the fire. And people are inside, ignorant, not knowing that this house will soon collapse. This house is on fire. This house, all the people there will die and perish. Then you go out and you are just thanking God. Say thank, but you are still strong. You can help others. He said, No, you are not ready to do that. You are not ready to go and help others the way God brought you out. Is that a grateful person? No. That is the state of many Christians today. You are rejoicing that God has saved you. Yes, it is good. You are giving test, you are thanking God, but there are still sinners among your family members among people all around you, in your church, in your congregation, where you work, in your school, where you are learning your trade, there are sinners everywhere. And you are doing nothing about it. That person is an ingrate. That person will not retain that salvation. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. Let's make progress. Jesus is the greatest evangelist. He is the master of the universe. The one that created us. He came into this world for a particular purpose. Evangelism. Evangelism was the one occupation of his life when he was on earth. When he began his ministry of evangelism, he called to himself disciples to follow him and witness to souls for him. The instruction, follow me. Do not only go to these two people you know, where we read, uh, where we I he called people, say, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. That is what the Lord has in mind. Follow me, I will make you a soul. If not, when you get born again, you will, just, you will just die and go to heaven. But we are left here on earth so that we can evangelize, so that we can witness, so that we can save others. We are saved to serve. We are saved to evangelize. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. While on earth, he was about this business of soul winning. A time came, they said, Master, will you not eat even to eat food? He said, I have meat to eat that you don't know of. They said, has somebody brought food to him? He said, my meat, my passion, my heartbeat is to do the will of him that sent me and to do what? And to finish his work. Hallelujah. It means, even if you have one, two, three, four souls, there are still very many people that are perishing. There are still very many people in the broad way to hell. You will not stop. You keep on preaching. Keep on occupying until the Lord comes. And so shall it be in our lives in Jesus' name. So, God engaged the greatest thing Jesus would have done, would have you to do on earth, is while we're on probation, is to win souls for him. That's the best thing you can do for him. That is passion. That is heartbeat to satisfy. In a, a revelation recently that the Lord gave, I think to our mom in the Lord, the Lord showed many believers who are crying, looking to him, God bless me with this, give me food. Give me success. Give me blessing. Give me this. The Lord said, you have left me hungry. And you want me to be feeding you, to be asking, are you following? He says, soul winning is my food. Souls is my passion. That is what I want. 
to bring souls to my kingdom. And you have left me hungry. You have not satisfied my desire. How do you want me to satisfy your own? Are you following? That is why the Lord said, this year is the year of fruitful evangelism. Then what will follow? Answer prayers. Fruitful evangelism and answer prayer. One of our overseers that led prayer here yesterday was sharing a personal testimony. How the Lord helped him. He gave attention to evangelism. Began to do it in a little way. And God started answering his prayer. Hallelujah. He started receiving debt forgiveness. People started writing off his debts. He is calling to pay. They say they won't even pick the call. Don't bother. Don't bother. Some will call him directly and say, don't bother. To the tune of thousands and millions of naira. Praise the Lord. So we need to see that some of the problems, several problems like Jonah, the Lord sent him to evangelize. The Lord sent him to win souls. The Lord sent him to save Nineveh. Go and warn them. But he took a different course. He took another journey to the opposite direction. Did he go well with Jonah? That is why many believers in the, in the sea of life are encountering shipwreck, encountering storms. As you have this understanding, the Lord opened our eyes, give us grace to obey him in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, he says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? All these other professions in the world are not equivalent to evangelism. Amen. Today, you have youths, you have children. You say, wow, what do you want to be? I want to be a banker. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a pilot. How many will say, I want to be a pastor? <laughs> Even among the pastors. Okay, you want to be a minister. How many want to be an apostle? You see them. How many want to be a bishop? How many want to be a teacher? How many want to be an evangelist? Ah, no, 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 no. Evangelists will be going up and down, facing ridicule, facing shame, in poverty. That is the way people of the world see it. So even in the church too, they give the least regard to evangelists. Have you seen where they're introducing ministers? And they say, evangelists, so and so. And people are, are, are clapping. No. It's the archbishop, reverend, and so on and so forth. But you can see our daddy has demonstrated it here today. Hallelujah. Put your hand together for our international director. <laughs> he has given honor to evangelists. He has given honor to the soul winner. That's the same way the Lord too gives honor to evangelists. He said, overseers, go and sit down. I will give them the gift myself. Put your hand together once again. <laughs> Amen. Win more souls by December. Maybe daddy may add handshake to you. As he give you the book, maybe we also shake your hand. Hallelujah. So please, let us make God happy. If a mortal man, human being, as your leader is happy that you are winning souls to Jesus, how happy will Jesus be? We shall make Jesus happy in Jesus' name. Let's make progress because we have a long journey ahead. Uh, 1.2, the importance of evangelism. In Romans chapter 10, from verse 11 to 15. Romans 10, 11 to 15. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom that they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. The gospel is the gospel of peace. It's glad tidings. It's good news. And he said, how beautiful are their feet that bring good news, that bring glad tidings. 
The Lord will make us to be heralds of the gospel of peace in Jesus' name. We do not have enough pastors and workers in the kingdom. We don't have enough intelligent and learned people. We don't have enough professionals in the church. We don't have people that can do this effectively, that have a wider sphere of influence that can influence people. Amen. Because the position you occupy gives you an added advantage to make input in the kingdom of God. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So we need evangelists who will go to the great to business centers, to offices, to markets, to all places, even to farms, everywhere where you find the sinners. For what, the sake of one person, the Lord can send you somewhere. Like you see how the Lord did to Philip. Because of the Ethiopian eunuch, the Lord told him, go to this desert place where he's very unlikely to find people. And he went there, he obeyed. And the Ethiopian eunuch got converted. Amen. And church tradition has it that as that eunuch went back to Ethiopia, he continued the practice of Christianity. Through him, he raised Christians in Ethiopia. May the Lord use us also in Jesus' name. The book of Luke and the book of Acts of Apostles were written to one of such dignitaries called Theophilus, uh, who was a convert of Luke. And he wrote a book to teach him, to, to, learn, to inform him. To, it's a follow-up. It's a form of discipleship that so that he will have a clear understanding. And he gave him the whole gospel of Luke. Hallelujah. Then the book of Acts of Apostle, which is a follow-up to the earlier letter that he had written. In Acts chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The formal treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Amen. So winners must first give themselves to God and dedicate their time to go to offices. Who is the person to go? Is it everybody? No. You must first experience salvation yourself. As important as it is, it is good that the husband man that laboreth should be first partaker of the fruit of what he's doing. You must be born again yourself. You need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You need to have a change of life. In fact, that change of life will be so visible that even before you start preaching, people will begin to notice that there's a great change that has happened in your life. Amen. When uh, the apostles, uh, Peter, healed a paralytic man, and they were wondering, ah, is not this the man that sat begging? Some say he's the one. He said, I am he. Because something has happened in his life. They could not see him walking about. So, we must have the experience of salvation. You must be born again. There must be a change in your life. You must be a new creature. Then you cannot go and be preaching and spreading the message for the experience you have received. So, personal salvation is indispensable for us to be effective as soul winners. If they are converted to Christ, they will, be, they will do some great things for, Christ, for Jesus and for the church. You will spend your time and talents and wealth to promote the gospel of Christ. In Isaiah chapter 60, from verse 1, Arise, shine, for the light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall come upon the earth, and gross darkness shall cover the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. Amen. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. In Jesus' name. We have to move faster. We are going to chapter 2 now. Wisdom and boldness in evangelism. Everybody say it. Yes. Number one, be wise and fruitful. In Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life 
and he that winneth souls is wise. Wisdom is important to win souls. And he that winneth souls must be wise. Praise the Lord. Therefore means that we need to have strategies, methods, and different approaches that we should put in place so that our efforts shall not go down the drain. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. John chapter 15 from verse 1 to 5 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth no fruit, he taketh it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean to the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Amen. We must abide in Christ. Because without Jesus, we can do nothing. It means you must be born again. You must be obedient to the word of God. One of our sisters, when she newly got born again, she was very zealous. She wanted to preach. She wanted to warn people. But she said, she as a youth, she has no, as a lady, she only has trousers. She doesn't have skirts. She doesn't have gown. Trousers. So she wore the trousers and went and started preaching. Repent. Give your life to Christ. If you are wearing trousers, you will go to hell. The people say, ah, what? what is happening here? This what you are wearing. What is this one now? He said, I've told you, you must repent. Don't. <laughs> so the, <laughs> it's a long story anyway. I will not have time to share the whole testimony. Praise the Lord. But thank God by today now, God has established her and she is an example of the believer in righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. So, he that winner souls is wise. Sit down and think. How do I, how do you, how to do it? How do you help your family members to know the truth? Does your brother have a child? that can spend a holiday with you. Maybe some of these places where some are Muslims, some are Christians, but you are members of the same family. You can tell the child, ah, your brother, ah, this is your children, let them come and spend a holiday with me, or one of them, or two of them, and they will be happy. Because you know, children like adventure. They want to, they are very curious. So when he comes there, of course, you will not go and carry him to the mosque. He has to go to church with you. Is that not so? And they will take part in the family devotion. They may even be Christians, but they may just be nominal Christians. They may not have known this message of holiness. And so, as he's there with you in the house, you'll be teaching him. And you can invite your friend for a, a period of time. And that period, like this, a program like this too, you can invite your friend to a conference like this. There will be free food. In this period that things are hard, you tell somebody, come. Who will feed you from Tuesday to Friday, free food. Will it not come? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we must be wise and God will give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Let's move forward. Sometimes also we can share tracts. So sometimes when you see some of these big churches, when they close from service, you see the way people are pumping out. People are coming out. You can have tracts. Stay in a corner. Be giving them tracts. Be giving them tracts. Is that not so? You can have a megaphone. You go out for morning cry. Preach the word of God. Or you station it in a place. And be playing the message. Be playing the message. You will not know the impact that that message is making. But the message is doing a great deal. Hallelujah. A testimony I had of somebody, the Lord, just the way God led Philip to the Ethiopian eunuch. The Lord led this evangelist to go to that bush and go and preach. It's good to obey God though. It's good to be led by God. As many as are the sons of God, they are led by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. He went there and unknown to him, there was somebody that wanted to commit suicide. Was tired of life. And had already tied the rope. Just to put his head, he had somebody preaching he said, before I die, let me hear this message. Since I'm, what, what, what is, am I doing? 
Through that message, he got born again. Put your hand together for Jesus. And he did not commit that suicide again. So may the Lord help us to be obedient in Jesus' name. The wisdom of God is very important for us to be effective in soul winning. Number two, be bold and courageous. Fear must be removed from your life. Ask God for help. That fear should be removed from your heart. Refuse it. Refuse fear. Praise the Lord. The, you know, for you to stand up, to face people and preach. A brother was sharing a testimony. If I even, he was, we were in a prayer meeting in my zone. And he stood up, he was leading the prayer and he started sharing a testimony. He said, I'm very happy, thank God for me, that yesterday I went out with my wife to do evangelism. And uh, the, the greatest thing he used to fear as a Christian is to do evangelism. That how to face people and talk to them, that he don't, he's so ashamed, he's so afraid. But the wife keep on drawing him. The wife is an evangelist herself. And they went out and evangelized. And the people surrendered to Christ. He is very happy. That a great joy is in his heart. Praise the Lord. So, fear must be taken away from your heart. Don't be afraid. Somebody may challenge you as you stand up to preach in the bus. Sit down there. Don't be afraid. Continue preaching. Amen. Don't be afraid. God will remove. God, the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given to us the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and of a sound mind. That shall be our portion in Jesus' name. Remember also that evangelism is warfare. Is the person the Lord is leading to you a Muslim? Maybe he has a black spot on his forehead to show you has really been knocking the head on the ground. He's looking very terrible. But if you see the trouble that is going on in his life, you will know that he is somebody that you should preach the word of God to. Amen. Therefore, we should put away fear from us. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 6 to 8. And thou son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their works. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dwellest among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house, and thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house, open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Amen. Do not be terrified by their looks. You see a man, a big man, highly placed, don't be afraid. He has problems that he's facing. Give him the message. Give him the word. Through books, through tapes, or you can even connect people to these uh, links, the, the Zoom links, to the internet, where they can follow the Bible study, or how they can get the messages on YouTube. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Be not afraid, for I am with you. The Lord said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, in Jesus' name. There is the need for prayer, because evangelism is warfare. Like our daddy was saying, that when a strong man, armed, is keeping his palace, his goods are secure. But when a stronger than him shall come upon him, he will dispossess him of his armor. Amen. And he will take away the goods. So the devil, the Bible describes him as somebody that has imprisoned people, locked many, many, a great percentage of humanity are under the cage, under the bondage, under the prison of Satan, all over the world, in the billions of number. If humanity is 8 billion, as it is said now, how many billions are under the cage of Satan? Under the prison of Satan, in the danger of hellfire, there are so many. Go look at the continents of the world, Asia, for instance. The countries like China, like India, where you have over 1.4 billion, 1.5 billion of people, many of them are in darkness. 
Other countries in Asia, you have all these Islamic countries, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Turkey. These people, many of them have banned Christianity. They don't even want to hear the word of God. And there are so many. How about South America? You have the Roman Catholics have taken over the place that look as if they are Christian, but they are idol worshippers. There are people that are bowing down to idols, to images. The Bible, they are praying through dead people, through dead saints, praying through Mary. These are not Christians. They are not true Christians. Brazil, Argentina, and all the other countries there, Catholics are in high majority there. You go to Europe, where Christianity is almost dead in that place. In fact, the people are promoting Satan. In America, in Europe, they have rejected God. They say, God, we don't want you. We don't, with Satan, we want. They have banned the teaching of the Bible in many, many places. In fact, you can't preach. Go and preach. Give somebody trust. Go and preach openly there. Before you know, they have called police. Police will come and say, what have I done? When you get to the station, you will know what you have done. For preaching the word of God. More, uh, Muslims are buying over churches. They are turning churches to museums. Because it's only very, very old people that are still going to church. The young people, they say, there is money, there is food, there is everything. What do I need God for? That's the prosperity of the fools that kills them. And what about Africa? Africa too is in darkness. Idol worship. Paganism. Hidden practices everywhere in Africa. You see going on. Culture, tradition of men against God. Even a place like Nigeria, where you say ah, there are churches, there are Christians. How many, what percentage is practicing true Christianity? Majority are following fake Christianity. They have, another gospel has taken them. And they are not serving the true Christ. At best, those that appear to be serving God is just the first touch. Just the uh, first touch evangelism they have got. They have not known the detail that without holiness, no man shall see God. That is why you see them selling uh, anointing oil, handkerchief, apron, and other substances that, for miracles. The Christians of today are the ones that are looking for prosperity, miracle, signs, and wonders. Me, I know, go suffer. But Jesus suffered. And he said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. But you say you will not suffer. What if Jesus came and said, I will not suffer? Will he carry the cross and die on the cross? And he said, if you want to be my disciple, carry your own cross. He said, no, I can't carry a cross. Is that person a Christian? You see that the field indeed is ripe for harvest. But the laborers are so few. Since that time that the Lord said it to today, it's even worse in our time. You see the great need of laborers in the house of God. Laborers to go and preach the gospel. Among those also that have understood the message of holiness, the devil blocked you. He tied a chain to your leg. He put a heavy load on you that you cannot go out and preach. He made that leg to become paralyzed. A Christian. During a program we had in Makodi, recent, not too long ago, uh, when, uh, Daddy visited Makodi and some of us escorted him there. And the Lord gave a revelation to our mommy. And the Lord, when prayer became very hot for evangelism, for soul winning, the Lord sent his angels who were removing the leg. Came with new, new leg. Brand new leg. Removing the dead leg. I'm fixing new leg. Some of us, our leg is dead, it's paralyzed. You cannot preach. Some of us, our mouths, you cannot talk. You cannot open it. Your hand is handicapped. You cannot give out trust. You cannot invite somebody. God will change that today in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. We are moving forward. 2.3. Boldly declare to the people their sins. Boldly declare to the people their sins. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Amen. This is Old Testament. Holy Ghost baptism has not come in fullness then. 
But Micah said, of a truth. Truly, I am full of power. Are you full of power? You must seek the power of God. Today is the last of this program. Make sure you are full of power. You are full of might. In Jesus name. In the early church, when they wanted to bring people that will share, who will serve tables, that will help in distributing food, they say, seek for men that are full of faith, full of power. We need the power of God to contend, to win souls, and to make them to stand in Jesus' name. But they declare to the people their sins, do not be shy. When you go to a sinner to preach to him, whichever portion of the scripture the Holy Ghost put in your mind, speak from that place. If the Holy Ghost says, start from the ungodly dressing, he or she is putting on, start from that place. Go ahead. Not minding whether he will say you are judging him or judging her or not. Jesus said, Jesus used the issue of marriage when evangelizing to the woman of Samaria. He used that area and brought out her sin very fast. Amen. Carry this boldness and go for evangelism and soul winning. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We want to go to chapter 3 now. The consequences of not evangelizing. Amen. This chapter 3 is like the pivot. This chapter 3 is the main chapter of this book. Which God has inspired our daddy. That he has extracted this chapter. To make it a booklet. Which shall be like a companion. Which we shall be carrying about. We sharing everywhere. To reawaken evangelism. In our lives, in our congregation, in our unit. You see, unit fellowship is dying. People are, people are not coming to the units. You start a unit with 15 people. Before sometimes you drop to 10, drop to 5, 2, until the unit leader himself say, I'm tired. Sir, please, can you appoint another person? I need time for my business. The master's business, no time. Your own business is where you need time. So, the overseer or the chapter coordinator has to be marching units. Kai. It shall not be so again in Jesus' name. The unit leader does not have time for the work. The chapter coordinator does not have time for the work. You are not visiting the people. You are not evangelizing. You are not inviting people. You are, normally, you are supposed to go around. Have a plan for evangelism. Have a plan. Engage the members of the unit. Engage the members of the chapter. And you yourself be at the forefront. To lead out, to bring people to Christ. Who will reject the good news? If as you are here and I say, how many of us want to go to heaven? Raise your hand. I'm asking you now. You want to go to heaven? Wave your hand. See everybody's raising hand. Okay, put your hand down. How many people want to go to hell fire and the lake of fire? Raise your hand. Nobody. Who will you give a good news that will reject it? If you are not preaching, you are not evangelizing, you are not doing it with excitement. You are not doing it to make them know that there's something to gain. You go and tell the people, please, we're having unit meeting on Saturday by so and so time. Ah, uh, please, it's a wonderful time. In fact, God is using our Father and the Lord. You, by, you say, okay, okay, okay. Like, I will come, I will come. And when it's time for the unit meeting, you go and still go to the person and come with him. That's the way to do this work. It's not that you go and sit down there. Then... When they are not coming, this boy, I don't know why they are not coming. You not carry, after about 30 minutes, you not carry phone and phone so and so. Uh, sister, are you not coming for unit meeting? Ah, it's today you need to feel, I've gone to market. <laughs> I'm in the farm. This is rainy season. <laughs> this is not how to do this work. And when the people have come, after the fellowship, from there, you have assigned somebody. This newcomer, you follow him to the house. Not to be describing your uh, where are you staying? Where are, no, they are there with you already. You follow this one to his house. You follow this one to our house. That is how to follow up. You now know where they are living. During the week, you follow the visit them again. I hope you understand. That is uh, then get their phone numbers, send messages to them. Those of them that are on WhatsApp, join them to the Hol holiness group. And then so they can have access to international Bible study. May God help us, revive us in Jesus' name. 
Chapter 3, the consequences of not evangelizing. Ezekiel chapter 3 from verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of, at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou want the wicked, and he turn from his wickedness, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling blow before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Amen. God is like God has tied our own salvation to the preaching of the word of God. Remember the story, a parable the Lord gave of a, a, a creditor. They had debtors. One of them owed him 10,000 talents. And he came and fell down before him and said, uh, Lord, Master, have mercy on me. Be patient with me. I will pay you all. And the master was moved with compassion and freely forgave him. I said, I write off your debt. I forgive you. You are a free man. Go. Uh, the same man went out and saw somebody owing him maybe two pence or hundred pence. The lowest sum of money. He said, come and pay. Please be patient. He grabbed him by the throat and cast him into prison. The other servant said, Kai, you are, you are a very terrible person. You see what blessings you have received from the same master. And now you have brought another servant. They went and reported him. And the, the Lord called him and said, you are a wicked person. I forgave you so much. Many of us today would have been in hell by now. But God showed us mercy. In tenderness, he sought us. Weary and weak in sin and sick in sin. And on his shoulders, he brought us back to the fold again. He paid the price for us. Why are you not telling other people about their sin? I, <clears throat> I remember some years ago, when as a youth, as a young person, in deeper life that time, going about doing evangelism in a village where I was, in, uh, somewhere in Badagri. So, we're preaching the word. To idol, idol worshippers are many there. It's a riverine area. Marine spirits, a terrible thing. Masquerade, all that. So, I got to a place. A member of the church was living in the same compound. So, we were following up this person and was, there was a good prospect. This, uh, the sister called me and said, leave these people. They say it's idol they want to worship. Leave them. I was just baffled. I said, ah, ah. It was later we discovered that she is at enmity with them. So she wants them to perish. Is that person going to have eternal life? Cannot have. Because you are seeing other perishing, it means nothing to you. Is it nothing to you that pass by? Look at the woes that have come upon people. People are in darkness now. Even the few that have been going to church before, the devil is still doing everything possible to snatch them away, to block them from eternal life. Are you going to heaven alone? That is why you must rise up and preach this gospel. Because if you don't preach, your own salvation will be lost. That salvation we have received is probational. It's conditional. It is the eternal salvation will only be gotten at the end. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Brothers, many things are already going wrong in your life. Brother, sister, brethren. And this includes sicknesses that you may be going through in life. We have seen the story of Jonah. How there was a great tempestuous storm that would have swallowed up the whole ship until he was thrown in there into the waters. 
So, when you repent and begin to preach this gospel, many of these problems will just go naturally in Jesus' name. Preaching the gospel is the heartbeat of Christ. But why are you not giving him chance in your life? More than that, he said in the book of Mark, where we read chapter 16, the last verse, they went everywhere, the Lord walking with them. God wants to walk with you. When you don't preach, you are depriving him of walking, continuing his walk on earth here. As you are going about preaching, he's continuing doing his work. Remember the song? Everywhere he went, he was doing good. So, you are now the hands and the feet of Christ. Amen. So, you are to carry Jesus everywhere. You are now the one carrying the Holy Ghost everywhere to preach the word, to warn sinners, to tell them. Some people get easily discouraged. But I have preached no fruit. I have preached. There are various reasons for that. Number one, you have not, you saw it was just an ordinary conversation. You don't know that there is a warfare. You don't know that there are powers holding these people in sin. That you need to spend time to pray. Before you go and preach, you need to spend time, pray for the salvation of the poor. For, let God even direct you to ripe souls. There are some, some time on a tree. There are times maybe when you are stoning something, you are struggling to even bring one fruit down. But there are some that a little touch and the fruit will come down. Is it not so? That's the ripe souls. It's true prayer. Waiting on the Lord. Fasting. Because it's a warfare. God will lead you to souls that are ready. To souls that are you know, receptive. Even when you go and meet resistance, it is still true prayer. Amen? We can see in the, how the Lord was directing evangelism. A time came, Paul and his company wanted to go somewhere in Bithynia. The Lord forbade them. They wanted to preach in another place. He did not allow them. Then in the night, he had a vision. A man of Macedonia said, come over to Macedonia and help us. That is the Macedonian call. And they has got the assurance God is leading us to this place. And they went there and they had success. Hallelujah. That may be one of the reasons why you are not succeeding. But be that as it may, remember, the word of God is a two-edged sword. I hope you are following. If the person refuses to repent, that word will serve as a witness against him. Remember, the head of admin was, when he was uh, preaching, he said a youth was here and the father came and forcefully removed him from the, uh, the conference. And he told the man, leave this boy. Even the mother said, leave this boy. He's the one interceding for the family. And he told him eventually, God is the one that brought you here. In eternity, a day will come when you remember. If you had obeyed, if you had even stayed and heard the word, you would not have ended in hell. So, the word of God is both to convert people and also to bring conviction. The Lord said, when you go to a place to preach and they reject you, they chase you away, don't strive with them. Shake off the dust from your feet and go away. That is a witness against them. That is a testimony against them. So, whichever way, keep on preaching the word. Keep on evangelizing. Keep on giving out the materials. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 3.1, lack of evangelism in cures God's wrath on the believer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 16 to 18. For though I pray the word, the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power of the gospel. Amen. Apostle Paul sums up the things that will happen to him if he did not preach the gospel as woe. It means you will come to him and sympathize for the calamity that had befallen him if he did not open his mouth to preach the word of God. And so he continued preaching. And so he continued preaching. At another time, he was telling people that as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Amen. In other places, he said, I am set as, as a defense. 
for the gospel. He gave his life for preaching on the word of God. We too were to give our lives. If it's the same heaven that Paul went to, that we are aspiring to go, we must follow in his footsteps. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Our Father in the Lord too is a great example and mentor for us to follow his footsteps. You can see his passion for souls. You can see his hunger and task to make sure that sinners are brought to the Lord. Let us follow such and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In 2 Kings chapter 7 and in verse 9, we see the story of the four lepers. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. Amen. The four lepers knew that if they withhold their peace, because they were carrying things to go and keep, they ate food, they entered this land, they said, Kai, we are not doing well. You too, you are not doing well for not preaching the gospel. I'm not doing well if I do not preach the gospel. And Paul said, woe is unto me if I do not preach this gospel. And God will help us to preach, follow these examples in Jesus' name. The four lepers knew that some mischief would happen in their lives if they sat and enjoyed their lives without going to share the good news with the people in the city. So you don't know that some mischief may have befallen you already. How to cure those mischief is by repentance and obedience and going out to preach the word of God and God will prosper us in this in Jesus' name. For instance, there are some many Christians today now that don't pay tithes. And it's a clear commandment. Bring in all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. But they are not giving tithes. Some say the money I'm receiving is too small. It's just uh, 20,000. If I remove 2,000 now, how will I? The devil gave you that mind so that he can keep you in poverty. You will remain impoverished because you are not obeying the word of God. Those that fail to pay tithes, does God not punish them? Even here in this world, are they not under punishment, under judgment? And in eternity, are they not going to end in hellfire? Paying of tithe is an instruction God gave as preaching the gospel. So, if tithe defaulters face the wrath of God, the same too is applicable to those that willfully refuse to preach the word of God. Go out and win souls for the Lord. Go out and tell the dejected ones the message of hope. Go and give the sinners hope. That their sins can still be forgiven them. Tell the witches and wizards that Jesus has the ultimate power to deliver them from the power of Satan. This is the message of hope and this is your duty. And we shall do it in Jesus' name. Lack of evangelism makes you spiritually dry. In Ezekiel 37 verse 1 and 2, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. Praise the Lord. The type of evangelism you see in some place that some of these churches where they want to add to their members, they will go and say, come and join our church. These are people, in fact, some of them don't qualify to be called church actually. Because Jesus is not there. God is not there. They are even telling you, we are not preaching for heaven here. God gave everybody his own message. Our own message is prosperity. Our own message is uh, healing. Some places is just to see vision, prophecy, revelation. Spend the whole day in prophesying, giving everybody prophecy. They are happy. Some is just to entertain people. So that is the evangelism they are doing. Is that what evangelism? It's not. Rather, it is to bring the sinner out of bondage and bring him to the glorious liberty of Christ. For the sinner to acknowledge Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. And to continue in Christ until he enters heaven. Praise the Lord. 
So evangelism is all encompassing. If you bring the, if truly the person gets born again, and the environment where he is, is full of thorns, a rocky environment, he cannot prosper there. Because they are not, he will not hear the words of God. The Lord said, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. That can only be in a holy church. That can only be in a holy ministry, a holy movement. Where they will hear the word of God and they will practice it and make it to heaven in Jesus' name. So dryness comes as a result of lack of evangelism. The message of evangelism was given to Jonah, but he fled to Tashish, on the way to Tashish. And when eventually the Lord brought him back to preach in Nineveh, the message he preached, he didn't offer any hope. <laughs> he didn't offer any, no, he just said, yes, 40 days, and what will happen? Nineveh shall be destroyed. Yes, well, we can say there is hope there. God, God may have built in hope there. That at least anything you can do within 40 days, do it. And the king got the message. The king got Nineveh. He set his royal robes aside and put on sackcloth and commanded fasting and prayer. The whole city. A city that takes three days journey from one end to the other. And not only fasting and prayer, he said, everybody, turn from your violence. Turn from your wicked ways. What a great revival indeed. Amen. That place where you are staying, I don't know whether it is as wicked as Nineveh. Whether they are as uh, cruel as Nineveh, well, we cannot say. But if Nineveh could repent, your environment, your community, your village, your society can also repent. In Jesus' name. So we should learn from that and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Lack of evangelism may make you lose your salvation. We have also explained that because our salvation is probational until the eternal salvation we receive at the end. Christ Jesus has set you free from the spirit of sin and death. Now, this is the, the time, the state you find yourself that the Lord has delivered you. Many in the world are in two or more times worse than your states while you are wallowing in before in sin. Therefore, go and give them the message. It's an urgent message. It's a very important message. The Lord is watching whether you will tell these people that you were like them before, but Jesus saved you from your sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. For every true believer, child of God, the Lord has given us the ministry of reconciliation to bring the sinners back to himself so that he will forgive them and prepare them to inherit eternal life. There is a great danger in not preaching the gospel. You are likened to the man that Joseph interpreted his dream in prison. You know, two of the servants of Pharaoh were in prison with jo uh, Joseph and they interpreted to the chief butler, three days time, Pharaoh will elevate you. To the chief baker, three days time, your head will be cut off. And it happened like that. And he told the chief butler, please remember me. But he forgot him. And the assignment was not done. But thank God, after a period of time, Pharaoh had a dream. And he said, I remember my sins now. Now that you have realized the sin of not evangelizing, the danger of not evangelizing, the next thing to do is to go and start doing it. Amen. Immediately the butler said, Child, Pharaoh, there is a young man in the prison there. Bring him. They sent for Joseph in a hurry. He hurriedly shaved, changed his garment, and came before Pharaoh. If you do that, you will find favor before God. If you go and begin to preach this message, you will find favor of God, and adversities that have come upon you shall be taken away in Jesus' name. 3.4, lack of evangelism deprives the afflicted from Christ's intervention. All around us, people are suffering, people are passing through adversities, and you keep your mouth shut, you must open your mouth 
you must tell them. When a light, a candle is, uh, is lit, it's not to be kept under, it's to be put on top of the lampstand. Therefore, let your light shine. Not evangelizing makes you to be like the salt that has lost its saltness. It's that is good for nothing. Not preaching the word of God makes you good for nothing. Not preaching the word of God makes you a candidate to have fire. Not preaching the word of God makes God to say, discard him. You remember that tree that has been comparing the ground and say, of what value is it? Of what profit is it? I'm going to hew it down. Thank God for the vine dresser that said, okay, please, the gardener, let me dig around and manure it and let's see. That's what God is doing now. God is digging around us, digging around you, putting manure, putting fertilizer to see whether you will change, to see whether you will turn a new leaf, to see whether you begin to open your mouth, begin to preach, begin to warn people around you and become productive, to become fruitful. In Jesus' name, you will have to promise the Lord that you'll be fruitful. Remember, it's not something to do for a season and stop, no is a lifetime commitment preach the word be instant in season and out of season don't do it for a period and keep quiet no let the fire keep on burning let the fire of soul winning evangelism keep on burning and our leaders we need to you know develop strategies and plans to help our people because if you leave them on their own they may not be able to do it therefore there is need for organized evangelism amen you can start with organized prayer. When prayer is hot, permit me to use my zone. I'm sorry for an example. I only use one of the chapters. I will not talk of the other ones. In one of the chapters, we had a vigil of one month. They did the vigil from beginning of the month to the end. Every day, prayer for souls. Prayer for souls. Prayer, come praying for the various parts, and then they launched out. Hey, so started coming in. People started coming in. The chapter of the coming says, "I we need more cheer. We need more cheer." He went somewhere and got ten cheers and brought. People were still coming. Put your hand together for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. People, souls were coming in. Coming in. We need more cheer. Then, a time will come and say, okay, please, our members, stand up. Or more members, stand up. Will you not like it that newcomers come? They say, you, that is an old member, stand up. Will you not, you quickly, happily stand up. They were sitting down. In another of the chapters, the same one month of vigil was done. Then, they started doing crusade. Crusade. Souls were coming in one meeting alone in this chapter. I think the chapter led out to be about 12 newcomers or so in one meeting. And so it has continued like that too. Praise the Lord. Prayer is very important. Prayer will reawaken the soul winner himself. We make him ready to go and preach. We make you know that you are a sinner when you are not evangelizing. We break the chains. Huh. There are strong men holding people. There are territorial powers. They are laying claim to these souls. The Bible said that the devil, he locks the prison. He refuses to let the prisoners go. And some of these people too, they are lawful captive. They are the ones that handed themselves over to the devil. They are the ones that went to look for charm. They are the ones that went to look for, you know, for a miracle from the devil. Therefore, the devil is laying claim to them. But with prayer, stronger power, all those forces shall be broken. And the people shall be set free in Jesus' name. There is a need to plan evangelism. It will be planned. If not, you will just be doing hit and run or touch and go tactics. You know, map out the area of your coverage. The units, the chapter, the zone, the state, the nation. Plan how to evangelize and cover each area. Because we are going to give account to God. Remember, we are stewards that will give account. And the Bible says it's required of stewards that what shall happen, a man should be found faithful. Also, organize follow-up. It's part of evangelism. To follow up the converts. After a program like this, many of the youths are prone to running away. Are you like that? 
Are you going to run away after this conference? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's a challenge that we'll be facing. You will carry buses and bring the youths. As conference finish, bye-bye, bye-bye to your tent, O Israel. Ha, it's not good. Because the Lord Jesus said to those that believe in him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Praise the Lord. You must continue as you go back to your state, as you go back to the zone, as you go back to the chapter, continue coming, continue hearing the word, continue with the unit meeting, with the chapter meeting, with the youth revival fellowship, and many other activities. That is how you will become fruitful as a Christian in Jesus' name. 3.4 says, lack of, okay, that's what we have just finished, lack of evangelism, the price, the afflicted, 3.5, lack of evangelism will withhold God's blessings from your life. We have also spoken about that. It was God. You know, God was the one punishing people. If you look at the book of Haggai, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 11, he said, the Lord was telling them, consider your ways. You have sown much, and you bring in little. You eat, and you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is no warmth. You are not feeling warm. He said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You need to consider your ways and set your hearts in order. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. There is a joy the soul winner has. You yourself, you will be happy. As the sinners repent and change their life, there will be joy in your heart. There is a joy of the soul winner. Remember also, there, is, there are many rewards in the, uh, the experience of our mom in the Lord, Mama Linda Porica. When the Lord took her to heaven, she saw big, big mansion, beautiful mansions. The Lord asked her, my daughter, do you know the owners of this mansion? I said, Lord, I don't know. He said, they are for evangelists. They are for soul winners. Put your hand together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the Bible tells us that there is also a crown of rejoicing for the soul winners. There are several crowns presented to the believers of the new, to the saints. The crown of life. There is also the crown of rejoicing for the soul winner. Amen. Then you will have stars in your crown. Will there be any stars? Any stars in your crown? When at evening the sun goes down, when I rise, when I wake with the saints in the mansions of light, will there be any stars in my crown? This is the time to live up for souls. This is the time to win souls. Not only, even inside the church, there are sinners in the church. Is it not so? Even in this conference, with the heat of the prayer, of the preaching, there are still people that are yet to get converted. Pick them. Preach to them. Follow them up. Give them the word. It's still part of soul winning. Not only to those outside, even to those inside. Even for the ones that are righteous. Remember in Ezekiel, God said, I'm giving warning to the sinner. I'm giving warning to the righteous. Is that not so? Even those that are not committing sin, you have to labor on them to, for the perfection of the saints. To all come to the fullness of the stature of Christ. So, this work of the evangelist, of the soul winner, is not just to bring the fish out of the water, uh, to bring, but to continue until that person is established and makes it to heaven eventually in Jesus' name. Stir up your soul for soul winning. Rise up for soul winning. Make up your mind that evangelism will begin radically today in Jesus' name. You can make a banner and put the word of God on it and put it in a conspicuous place. As people are passing, they are reading it. You think it's not making impact, it's doing something. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see some vehicles, they will write evangelism message on the bus or on the car. It's still preaching the word. All methods and all strategies should be used. I remember many years ago as a youth, when I entered the university, 
There's one big lecture theater in that, in, uh, they call it uh, uh, 500 lecture theater because I can take more than 500 students. Somebody went and wrote something on top. He said, repent. Time is running out fast. Give your life to Christ. See now, many years have passed. Uh, that's maybe around 1988, 88, 89. I'm talking now in 2024, what happened? So you can see that it can make a mark on somebody and people will repent. So devise different, some will do a t-shirt or clothes and put message at the back. Have you been seeing something like that? That's it. There are many methods you can use to preach the word. As you are doing it, you are washing your hands. From the souls, from the blood of people. Because when you get to the gate of heaven and say your hand is full of blood, me, I've never killed somebody. Ah, when they show you the number of people that died for your negligence, that died because you refused to preach, you now know that truly you are a murderer. You are not the one that will save with your own mouth. This place, like Abraham Yakubu in his testimony was saying, you are the one now eventually. You will look to the right and see the glory of heaven. You will tell the angel, no, no, look, I can't go to this place. I can't go there. You will turn to hell and see the doom there. You tell the angel, that's where I belong. Then you hear depart. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. We want to go to the next chapter because time has gone. Chapter 4 now. Personal and spiritual revival through evangelism and soul winning. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Amen. Revival and evangelism is part of overall revival. Evangelism, revival is very is key, is crucial and very important. We must make our people to evangelize. Include them in the evangelism. So there are some people that don't have the message. But because of their commitment to what they are doing, they are spreading their error. Look at the Jehovah Witnesses. Going about with their magazine, Watchtower, and Awake. Going about. You see them faithfully doing it. They don't have, do they have the message? They don't have the message. They are not Christian. They are not born again. But they are faithfully doing it. And they are getting through. Are they not having members? Do you know how many continents they have covered with their fake message? Therefore, you that have the message of life, go and preach the word. Go and tell them, Jesus died for sinful world. I will tell them, he is coming back again. Go with the message. Go with the word. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, we are talking about revival in evangelism. Let's see the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Occupy till I come. That is it. That is the yardstick. That is the parameter. That is the finish line. Occupy till I come. Keep on preaching. Keep on doing it. I want to talk about my father-in-law that died uh, some years ago and made it to heaven. Praise the Lord. This man, a great evangelist. Uh, he was a regional overseer in Deeper Life. And as a pastor, he was going... He was going from place to place with his bicycle in a remote, remote swampy area, this man suffered. Preaching the word. Then when he comes to visit, you see this man, he will preach. I say, ah, daddy, you, are, you don't know you are an old man. Oh, hey, this man, even me, young man, I cannot do what you are doing. He died and made it to heaven. Put your hand together for Jesus. 
In a revelation the Lord showed to our mommy, the Lord Mom Melinda, he came to him looking glorious and said, I have made heaven. My friend, uh, it's a long story anyway, but the bottom line is that he made it to heaven. So we give glory to God for the reward waiting for soul winners. We are running up by 10 o'clock. I want to quickly enter chapter 5 and see what we can uh, talk about there. Learning from Bible evangelists and soul winners. We can see some examples in the Bible. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19, he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And Andrew first found his brother Peter and see what Peter later became. Hallelujah. He found Philip and Philip found Nathaniel. That is how it is. There are many methods you can use. Personal evangelism, person-to-person -person contact, literature evangelism, using tracts, using books, and other Christian literature, invitation to conferences, to chapter meetings, to unit meeting, to zonal combined, state combined, and other fellowships. We have talked about the four lepers, how God used them to save a nation that had been besieged by their enemies. Many churches and denominations have been besieged by Satan. You have come here to this conference. Let God use you to bring light to your own uh, denomination. Don't think that you are a youth. You are too small. No. Youth are strong. You have the power of God. John wrote to them and said, I have written unto you young men because you are strong. In the word of God abide in you and you have overcome the evil one. The Lord help us. We overcome the evil one in Jesus name. Chapter 6 tells us of workable methods of evangelism. We have also mentioned some of them in the course of the review. And the last chapter, chapter 7, the writer of the book talks about seek counsel for effective and fruitful evangelism. It's good to come under, under the mentorship of men of God that are successful evangelists. You can get messages on evangelism and listening to them repeatedly. Thank God for this uh, extract of chapter 3 that our daddy is going to publish. Let it always be with you. Always reading it. We have other books on evangelism, passion and wisdom for soul winning and many others. As you do all this, the Lord will help us. He said, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. I ordained you that you should go forth and bring fruit and that what will happen your fruit shall remain. May the Lord bless our labor. Make our work fruitful in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and go to God in prayer. Rise on your feet. First of all, we need to repent before the Lord for our lackadaisical attitude, indifference to soul winning. People are perishing all around us, but you are content that you are going to heaven. You don't know that your own going to heaven is tied to your obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the great commission. Lord, have mercy upon us for not being devoted and committed to the task of soul winning. To the task of bringing sin people to the Lord. Many have died now. They are crying with your name in hell. They are saying, ah, this person is so wicked. You never told me. You never mentioned him to me. You met me day by day. And you knew I was astray. You never mentioned him to me. You never warned me about the danger that was ahead of me. You were making light of it. You were saying it and laughing. You did not know. You did not tell me that I'm going to perish. We want to pray, God help me. That the blood of sinners will not be required in my hand. Son of man, I made you a watchman. Hear the word of my mouth and give them warning. When I say to the wicked, Oh, wicked man, you shall surely die. If you don't give him warning, that wicked man will die. But his blood will not require at your hand. Are there people now that their blood is in your hand? Tell the Lord, please, I'm still on earth. I have not died yet. Have mercy upon me. Let the blood stains on my garment be washed off. Let the blood hold on my hand be taken away. Help me now to open my mouth and begin to preach. Begin to tell sinners about Jesus. Begin to tell people about the coming of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Maybe you were doing it before, but you became discouraged. Maybe you felt with all my labor, with all the money I'm spending, and you stopped it. My brother, you have done a wrong thing. My sister, you have done a wrong thing. The Lord said, Occupy till I 
come. Occupy till I come. Oh Lord, give us grace. Oh Lord, give us strength to keep on evangelizing, to keep on preaching the word in the name of Jesus. Make us to be fruitful. The Lord will make us to be fruitful believers that our labor shall be fruitful. Our labor shall not be in vain in the name of Jesus. We shall be able to meet with the soul winning assignment and then by the time we come in December, we shall have more than three souls converted that are abiding in Christ, abiding in Holy more in the name of Jesus. Give wisdom to our leaders to organize evangelism. Organize the members at unit level, at chapter level, at zonal level, state level, national level to go out for evangelism. 